Ladies and gentlemen, 53 new videos, 20,000 new subscribers, zero new pairs of shoes, and a lot of people letting you know that. Please welcome to the stage, YouTube's most average YouTuber, Patrick Jay. The year has come to an end, so it's time to look back at some of our best and worst travel experiences from the year. We finally reached 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. Instagram's nearing 1,000 as we grow this humble but ambitious channel. This is also the first year I actually made money off my videos, so I had to make sure to dedicate a little bit more time and money to actually make this dream of mine come true. I always wanted to travel, so once the possibility presented itself, I had to do it up big time. Believe it or not, my first ever international flight was actually just last year. My Lufthansa 747 flight was a grad present multiple years in the making. My friend was able to upgrade me to business class with some of his extra points, making it not only my first ever international flight, but my first ever premium cabin flight after 20 plus years of domestic economy flights. From that point on, it was game over. I couldn't stop traveling. I loved every moment of it, sharing the videos online, reminiscing back on it myself, hearing the public's thoughts and opinions, and maintaining an open discussion is what it's all about. In the rest of this video, I wanna cover a few things. First off, some of the frequently asked questions that you guys sent me, either in my DMs on Instagram or the commonly asked questions on my videos. Then I wanna get into some of the stats from this year of traveling. I wanna rank some of my experiences, best and worst, in a few different categories. And lastly, I wanna talk about some of the plans and goals that we have for the next year of this channel. Timestamps will be down below, but without further ado, let's get on to some of the common questions y'all sent me. Why don't you include footage of yourself? I was always more interested in the journey, airport to airport, which takes up enough time itself. I also don't really feel the need to make the video as much about me, more so just about the product itself. How do you book your flights? Honestly, every flight takes months of planning, also plugging in a hundred different origins and destinations to find the best possible deal. You also rarely see the entire journey. For example, if you've seen my Philippine Airlines video from Manila to San Francisco, my travel actually started in Shanghai, where I went Shanghai to Manila to San Francisco with a long layover in Manila. I just don't cover that first segment because it's just fluff for the main content. In addition, if you've seen my American Airlines first class video to India, I spent like six to eight months watching the mileage trends on that, plugging in a hundred different origins across the USA, Canada, Mexico, Caribbean, South America, etc. Also after Delhi connecting onto about 30 other cities before I finally saw the rate that I ended up booking at about half the normal rate. What do you do for work? I'm a pilot, so I work in the industry, in the Bay Area, do a couple things as a professional pilot, but that's pretty much all I share. How do you afford to fly? I, I don't, really. Realistically, it helps to be young and independent, but I'll spend hours matching routes, city pairs, booking with airlines directly whenever possible to make sure that I'm getting the best rate, the best mileage redemption, best credit card points, and working seven days a week between two jobs makes just enough to make it all possible. In addition, my trips are usually as compact as possible. There's times where I'll be gone for a week. I don't even leave an airport or an airplane. Do the airlines pay you to review them or give you your seat for free or discounted? This one's usually an aggressive comment more so than a question, considering anytime you say something positive about an airline, everyone just assumes they're paying you to say it. But no, I'm completely self-funded, either my money or my miles, but truth be told, I am just horrible at mileage redemption, something I'm looking to get better at in the future and spend a little less money. Do you ever travel economy class? Yes, actually, over 50% of my flights are in economy. Those videos just tend to underperform, so I don't post them as much, unless there's something else special about it, like the Air India longest flight or the United Dubai inaugural. Fortunately, as I fly more and I accrue more status and miles with airlines, it becomes easier to upgrade more often, but I didn't fly anything except economy until last year. Getting into some of the stats from this year's travel, starting off here, you can see the map of the different places that we traveled. Going into this year, I'd actually never been to Africa. Leaving this year, I actually visited Africa more commonly than any other continent. So growing this map is great. It's fun to see it grow year by year. Number of remote stands, 53. 53 times I boarded an airplane or deplaned an airplane without the use of a jet bridge, either walking out to an airplane or taking a bus out to the airplane. But that means just under 40% of my flights this year did not use a jet bridge. As compared to everyone else that I talked to, this is crazy high of a number.
The breakdown by cabins. Everyone likes to talk about this. So economy class, I flew 65 times this year. Business class, 66 times this year. And first class, 21 times this year. So actually, this was the first year ever that I flew economy class less than anything else. Quick little caveat, however, those 21 first class, about 14 of those were domestic first classes, which if you've traveled within the United States, you know that it's not really a true first class experience like that international first class. As far as my most flown airlines, number one's no surprise, SFO based, it's United. United I flew by far the most. However, it surprised me the rest of them as we saw Asiana as number two, then Qatar, Kenya Airways, and Scandinavian Airlines. The reason I find this interesting is because there's basically one airline from each continent in the Northern Hemisphere plus Africa. Most flown aircraft, 737-800, top of the list. I don't think it'll ever be beaten. The amount of domestic flights I take, it's always a 737-800, it seems. However, number two is the 777-300. Number three is a 787-9. I find it interesting how low amount of Airbuses there are in my top fleet, considering I've been really trying to get on more A350s and A330 Neos. I think those are fantastic aircraft, especially from the passenger experience, but Boeing just seems to be winning that battle. Most used airports, number one's SFO not even really worth mentioning. Number two is JFK. The amount of times I spent going back and forth between SFO and JFK, either for videos or just to visit family and friends, makes sense they're the top two. After that, we see London Heathrow as number three and Seoul Incheon as number four. Top route for the year, we mentioned SFO and JFK. SFO to JFK to SFO, we flew six times this year. As far as my top continent, and I'm judging this based on the number of countries visited within that continent, not necessarily the number of flights, was Africa. This year, I landed in 15 different countries in Africa. Incredible considering that a year ago, I hadn't even been to Africa. Aircraft age is a fun one because both the oldest and youngest aircraft were US-based aircraft. The oldest one I flew was a United 777-200. I think it was 774 Uniform Alpha from Newark to San Francisco. This plane debuted in 1994, making it 29 years old. As a counterpart to that, an Alaska Airlines 737 MAX that was made in August of last year, but I flew it in January of this year, so it was really only about four months old. The contrast between them is incredible, even with the updated interior of that United 777. My longest flight, and my shortest flight, they're kind of fun because they're both on the top list of each. The shortest flight's easy. I took the shortest flight in the world this year, West Ray to Papa West Ray, one of my lowest performing videos, so go check it out, boost those views. Longest flight I took this year was at the time, I believe the sixth longest flight in the world. Now it's like number eight, San Francisco to Bangalore, India on Air India. I flew that in economy, ton of views on that one. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people hated it. Not the video necessarily, the product. It's Air India's old economy product, which is kind of fading into the sunset. I'm very excited to try out their new A350s. I've got some tickets looking into on that. However, those were the comparisons between my longest and my shortest flight. A 17 hour flight versus a 90 second flight. As far as which videos perform the best and the worst, you can also go to my channel and check it out. But since we're here, number one, the United Manila inaugural. That thing blew up. I mean like 200,000 views in a day. Never seen that before on this channel. It was incredible. Thank you guys, especially the new viewers that came to go check that out. Then the Etihad Residence. That was my second video. I think still sits about 30,000 views behind the uh, United Manila inaugural, but very top views. Actually, number three is miles behind. Number three is miles behind. It's actually my Philippine Airlines business class. And then we're looking at the first classes of things like Emirates and Qatar. So there was definitely those two videos, one after the other. My channel was like all time high. That was a good month for me financially, but uh, hopefully we can reach those numbers again in the future. All said and done, a total of 37 days spent in the air, 400,000 miles, 60 different airlines, and 88 different airports were touched by this channel in 2023. The rankings. Possibly the best part of this video, what a lot of you guys are going to come here for. Starting off with the lie flat beds. Which airplane had the best bed? It's Etihad's residence. There's no surprise there. But if we're ruling out this independent bed, it's Emirates. It's, it's hard to beat Emirates first class. That mattress pad is like the princess and the pea story. I mean, you're sleeping on like an inch of memory foam. You've got all these pillows, all this bedding. Super comfortable. Honorable mention though to Air New Zealand, if you've seen the Sky Couch video, just because of its creativity. I mean, it's a lie flat bed in economy class, even if it's not quite as nice as these business and first class beds, it was a treat. The worst bed is 
kind of a tie because it has to do with these throne seats. So airlines like Swiss and Aer Lingus that we flew this year, you just end up in this really tight little channel and it's like sleeping in a coffin. So both of those airlines look like they have plans to grow their cabins. Swiss has actually announced what it's gonna look like and it seems to be going away from that. But those throne style seats, even though you have more privacy and more storage and counter space, the bed, not a perk. Best visa process. This doesn't include e-visas, visa on arrival. This is, I had to get a stamp or a piece of paper in my passport prior to the date of travel. The best, the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. These people were fantastic. I actually didn't have a lot of time between trips and I hadn't acquired a second passport yet, but I gave them this passport. I gave them my application. I even included a little letter in there saying, hey, I'm traveling on this date. I've prepaid for overnight shipping. If you could expedite it, I'd really appreciate it. They called me as soon as they received the passport. They told me how long they expected it to take. They actually did expedite it through a little bit quicker and called me to make sure that I knew that it was in the FedEx truck on its way to the airport to get back to me. Super great. Communication was top tier. DRC, way to go. Worst, Nigeria. Not even close. Holy crap, guys. Nigeria, I gave them my passport. They said it would take about two to three weeks. It had been two months. Actually, the visa said assessed after like three to five days. And then I never heard anything. I called, there's a bunch of different embassies and consulates of Nigeria. I called them all. They don't answer the phone. They don't have voicemail set up. If they do, they're full, so you can't leave a message. You can write them emails. They responded to my email a month later. And the visa servicing centers that you go to get fingerprinted and face scanned and all that kind of stuff, they'll give you some information, but once they hand the passport to the embassy or consulate, there's not a whole lot that they can do. I actually flew to DC to go knock on the door of the embassy and get my passport back. After that, they did expedite it back to me, but I had to cancel two trips in the meantime because they had my passport longer than they said they would by over twice as long. They weren't communicating it with me. And finally, I got my visa, a five-year multiple entry visa, which I don't think is what I applied for originally, but I'll take it. I have a couple plans to go back to Nigeria. So I'm excited for it, I guess, but boy, was it a painful process. Now the e-visa. So you can apply for it online without having to send someone your passport or visa on arrival. We'll throw that into this category as well. So not necessarily a physical visa, but an electronic visa or a visa that you get once you get to that country on arrival. The best is Indonesia. Indonesia's visa on arrival process was the easiest thing in the world. I gave them, I think it was 500,000 in their local currency. And that was it. No questions, no checks. They looked at my passport, they gave me a slip of paper, and I was off to immigration. It took like 30 seconds. It was awesome. The worst is also Indonesia. The e-visa program, if you decide not to do the visa on arrival pro process, it's very similar to Nigeria. I applied, and it was waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting. It said it would take like five to seven business days. Once again, it was like over two months later. Nothing had happened, no status changed. Actually, someone from Indonesia said that the best way to get it changed is to actually DM the immigration of Indonesia on Instagram, which I thought was kind of a funny fact. But eventually I was able to get in with the uh, visa on arrival, so it wasn't the end of the world. But also on top of that, I'd probably put Vietnam in there. Vietnam, I did apply for the e-visa. Same thing, it took a couple months longer than it was supposed to, which if you're seeing a trend here, apply for your visas way earlier than you think you need to. But they wouldn't work with me on arrival. Um, as a matter of fact, they would barely even talk to me. They were answering my questions without making eye contact with me. I had to sleep in this like hard floor in the immigration office while I tried to plead my case. All I really wanted to do is go to my hotel since I had a flight the next day uh, so I could rest up, shower, all that kind of stuff. Um, instead, I ended up sleeping in the airport, then being escorted up through the transfer hall, having to hand over a bunch of stuff in my check bag that couldn't be carried on because I couldn't get out to the check-in counter. It was a nightmare. Coffee. Who had the best and the worst coffee? Best coffee that I had all year on an airplane, Vietnam Airlines. Their Vietnam white coffee was like one of the best coffees I've ever had in general, let alone on an airplane. I will give honorable mention to JetBlue for serving Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Go Dunkin'. Uh, and Copa. Copa had good coffee in the airplanes and on the lounge. I just didn't have a video this year covering Copa, so I didn't want to make that up there with the Vietnam Airlines coffee. I also think Vietnam's maybe a little better. Worst coffee was probably just American Airlines. It was just, eh, it's just kind of bland coffee, you know? It, it works, it wakes you up, but it, it doesn't taste as good as this Dunkin' Donuts coffee or this Vietnamese white coffee, you know? Airports. What were my favorite and least favorite airports of the year? Best airport of the year, Singapore Changi Airport. 
I'd be surprised if that ever loses. I will give the honorable mention in this case to Doha Hamad International Airport. There's some very similar traits that they share. I do really enjoy Hamad International Airport. I think that their lounges are top tier, especially. Singapore Changi Airport's just unmatched. I mean, you could do a three-day vacation to Singapore, never leave the airport. It'd be the best, best vacation you ever took. Worst airport for like the 20th year in a row, Newark. I, for the life of me, can't figure out how to avoid Newark. My travels somehow seem to always route me through Newark. It's the only airport where you can arrive a half hour early but get off the plane an hour late just because there was no gate available. Even though you arrived on time because the outbound airplane's late, because the inbound airplane was late, because that one was late and just it's a mess. Um, so Newark is definitely top of the list, least favorite airport for the year. Flight crew, the best and the worst flight crew. Touchy subject because as we all know, airlines have hit or miss flight crews you can have the best crew on one flight and the worst crew on another flight. So by no means is this representative of an entire airline. I'm going to admit that first off. However, Emirates first class flight crew, unmatched. I mean, they I knew all of them by name. They knew me by name. By the end of this flight, we were talking like we were best friends for life. They were recommending things to me. It was, it was awesome. Um, I helped them figure out some things to do while they were in San Francisco. A couple of them hit me up on Instagram just to, just to chat. They were awesome. You know, if you didn't want to talk to them, they were leaving people alone. But as someone who enjoys talking to flight crew and hearing about different experiences, top tier. I will give honorable mention in this case to All Nippon's flight attendants. All Nippon, a, a lot of Japanese and a lot of Asian carriers have such an emphasis on the service aspect. Uh, and it shines through with All Nippon. I think their flight crew is some of the nicest, most attentive flight crews, even in their economy classes. They're always got a smile on their face, always offering you things you feel welcomed and wanted on board from the moment you step on board. The worst crew, Air Algerie. Air Algerie popped up a few places in these lists. Um, it was possibly my most disappointing flight of the year. I actually think that was the title of the video, so go check it out if you haven't. Honestly, I think it highlights a lot of things um, that need to be changed in the aviation industry. A lot of airlines have addressed it. Looks like they might be getting to it, but not quite yet. Um, I will give the crew somewhat of a benefit of the doubt in this case because I don't speak French or Arabic. Those are the two languages in Algeria. But English is an ICAO standard. Right? I mean, the crew has to be able to speak enough English that they can give the safety briefings and stuff like that uh, in English if needed. Um, and I didn't hear a word of English. Um, once I told them I spoke English, I really didn't hear a word from them. They just handed me food silently, or they would just kind of hand me a drink silently. They wouldn't really talk to me. They wouldn't interact with me. Um, even with a language barrier, you know, some sort of attempt at communication or a smile even at the very least can go a long way. And I feel like they were missing that. The best and the worst meals of the year. The best is actually tomorrow's video, so stay tuned, get hyped for that, but it's Garuda Indonesia's first class. Garuda Indonesia's first class was incredible. They actually had a personal chef that would come up, introduce the food, serve the food at my seat, give me preferences, all this kind of stuff. So that was a nice touch, but the food itself tasted fantastic. From the lounge to the airplane, it was some of the best food I've ever had. The worst, Got to revisit Air Algeria, unfortunately, on this topic. Uh, the business class food just felt a little lackluster. There was dry sandwiches. There was dry chicken. The only flavor was, I think I mentioned in the video, a small pickle and a small olive. Everything else was pretty much flavorless. Um, it seemed like from some people responding to the video that the economy class meals are slightly better just because they kind of pack it all in this box and give it to you. I don't know if it was the way they plated it or whatever. The Air Algeria videos just missed the mark for me entirely. Lounges. Lounges is a fun one. Honestly, a good lounge to me makes or breaks a flight because I'm already getting on the flight in an excellent mood with a good first impression of an airline. The best lounge, hands down, the Qatar Airways first class Al Safa Lounge in Doha. I think it is incredible. You walk in, it doesn't even feel like you're in an airport lounge. It feels like you're in like a museum as you walk down this first hallway. There's art pieces from Northern Africa and the Middle East. There's a ginormous fountain. The, the menu is extensive. They have sleep rooms. They have spa rooms. They have a TV room. They have a duty-free store within the lounge. They have everything you could need without it feeling super large and overcrowded. It still feels very homey. And I think that the Al Safa Lounge is top tier lounge in my opinion best lounge i ever visited worst lounge philippine airlines uh i've had some comments i guess it looks like philippine airlines is trying to build a new lounge uh in that terminal one at uh, manila airport uh just kind of as they grow because they've been shifting around philippine airlines flights which ones use which terminals 
But the lounge that I used in Manila for my flight to San Francisco was like the size of like a classroom. Very minimal food, very minimal seating. I think only two seats had chargers in front of it. Didn't even have restrooms. If you wanted to use the restrooms, you had to go to their other lounge. Their other lounge actually was bigger and nicer. For whatever reason though, the US bound flights weren't allowed to use that lounge. So Philippine Airlines unfortunately sits at the bottom of my lounge list for this year. And finally, they piece de resistance, the best and worst flight of the year. This is entire experience, airport to airport. It includes everything all encompassed. What was my favorite and my least favorite flight of the entire year? My favorite flight, and I'm not just doing this to advertise tomorrow's video, but the Garuda first class was absolutely incredible. They nailed every single touch that you want out of a first class experience super personalized from the chef, from the chauffeurs. I mean, they got in touch with me a week before my flight to ask me anything I could need to make it better. Get my pajama size, ask if I wanted any drinks ready when I got on board or in the lounge, all this kind of stuff. That's what you want out of a first class experience. They nailed it. I'm excited for that video tomorrow. Stay tuned. Worst flight, I don't think there's a huge surprise here, is Air Algerie. Air Algerie is lacking in a lot of categories, unfortunately. Now, I will, once again, give them a slight benefit of the doubt because they are acquiring these new airplanes. All right, they're getting a new fleet. They just redid the airport. They're currently working on the lounge. It's possible in three to five years time, they're an amazing airline. They're just not there right now. I did a transatlantic, roughly nine hour flight from Algiers to Montreal, and the business class seat that I was in was broken. It was lousy. I mean, the seat looked like a worn out couch in the worst possible way. It was dirty. A cockroach ran over my feet. My tray table smelled like vomit. The food tasted like nothing. The crew ignored me. Uh, not to mention the fact that before I got on board, I got pulled into a secret room and interrogated by Algerian immigration in a language I didn't understand. Fun, terrifying, make what you want out of it. But uh, Air Algerie, bottom tier for me this year. That being said, when they do get their new fleet and they finish their lounge in their airport, I am very excited to go actually see what it turns into, especially the country of Algeria. There were some visa issues, so I weren't able to actually get out into the country on this visit, but I'm excited to see it on the next trip. Last but certainly not least, I want to talk about this upcoming year, 2024. Where is this channel heading? First things first, I want to grow the sense of community. Now that we've got a little bit more people on this channel, I'm looking into starting a Patreon, into starting a WhatsApp group, things like that. If you have ideas, let me know. I'm working on it. I promise. Uh, I really do want to kind of get a community. I want to get all of us talking more. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the public discussions that we have over these things, I love talking about it in the comments and in the DMs you guys send me. But if we could get a group chat where we can all just kind of, you know, get down and dirty, talk about these things, that's what we're looking for on this channel. I also am trying to grow my social media presence outside of YouTube. So in addition to the YouTube videos, that's not changing, don't worry, but I also wanna get like some reels posted, all right? Some, some YouTube reels, some uh, Instagram reels, some TikToks. Uh, I wanna grow this channel on other platforms, kinda bridge the community together. There's people that watch YouTube but not TikTok, TikTok but not Instagram, you know? So everyone possible, all in one place, so we can all get talking about these aviation experiences and bring light to either the best or the worst of the industry. There's also a few new series that I'm looking to add this year. Uh, first thing is a 24 hour series. There's a lot of times where I go places, if I do leave an airport, very frequently it's 24 hours or less that I actually have in that city. So if I wanna see the city, I've gotta maximize my time there. I gotta stay in the right place, I gotta see the right things. Even if they're the more touristy things, the best way to see the city in 24 hours, or at least how I saw the city in 24 hours, I wanna make some more videos about that. So for people that do have short visits to these places, what did I see? Does, does it work for you? You know, um, the other one is just travel stories, all right? The more that I travel, the more crazy experiences I have, or the more unique experiences that I have, I want to share those. I want to share, you know, like I mentioned, I didn't get the Vietnam visa. What was that day? Like I didn't get this Nigerian visa. What was that trip? Like, um, or, you know, for example, I got robbed at gunpoint in Brazil. That's a heck of a story. I got stranded in Argentina. That's a heck of a story. There's all kinds of stuff we can talk about. I'm thinking of starting a series talking about that a little bit more. I also want to talk about some of the videos we got coming up this year because there's a few exciting things. A few things we're continuing. For example, about five to eight more episodes of the ones. 
All right, if you haven't been familiar with those, I'm trying to get on all the flight number ones in the world because they usually hold some sort of significance to an airline or a country. So I do have plans to get on about five to eight more of those. Stay tuned for that. In addition, I do want to keep getting on inaugurals. I don't have many that are officially planned. The only one I have booked right now is the Hawaiian Airlines 787 from Honolulu to San Francisco. I will be in business class on that flight. Very excited for it. Not in a window seat at the moment, so we're going to see if we can change that, but at least we'll be there for the party. Uh, I'm also looking at some Delta and some Lufthansa inaugurals, uh, but I'm also welcome to see what you guys have to say. Uh, I'm trying to branch out from the United inaugurals since I did three of those this year. And I also want to get into a couple more African wide bodies. Uh, Africa is one of the least represented aviation markets, and so for these airlines that have wide bodies, it's super intriguing to me. Um, we visited a ton of them this year. Um, there's still some videos that I took this year that are going to be coming out in January, maybe early February, kind of as we catch up with these videos, right? Um, but the two that I officially have planned and booked is Airpiece. Um, Josh Cahill made this airline famous, right? Uh, the Airpiece 777 from Lagos to Mumbai. It's a roughly nine to 10 hour flight. It's almost always delayed. Um, I'm sure it'll be a heck of an experience. Um, but now that I've got that visa, I'm ready to try it. Um, and then the other one, very exciting, I'm excited for this one, is the Air Tanzania 787 from Dar es Salaam to Guangzhou, China. Very unique route, very unique aircraft, especially for this airline. I'm super excited for that. New Year's resolutions, a big topic as we approach the new year every time. Uh, but there is a big one I have for this channel, and that is improving the editing quality. I recently purchased Final Cut Pro, so I'll be moving from iMovie to a little bit more professional of a software to use. Also, a new microphone so I can hopefully start to improve the audio quality of these videos. I do love your guys' suggestions. Speaking of which, as we grow the sense of community, flood my comments either on the new WhatsApp group once that's created or in my DMs or whatever you want. I'd love to hear from you guys. What airlines, routes, airplanes, what do you guys want to see for this next year? Big dreams, big aspirations. I'm really hoping to grow this channel a lot this year, um, and I'm excited to have you guys all along on the journey with me. Y'all really are the best, though. Whether it's roasting me for mispronouncing at least one thing in each video or disagreeing on whether or not to add music in the background. I'm really grateful for all of you guys. And I hope that together we can continue growing this channel as all these wonderful travel experiences wouldn't be possible without your support. So I hope you guys had a great 2023. I hope you have plans for a great 2024. And until next video, safe travels. I'll see y'all next time.